नेक्स्ट इज पीरेज कॉन्फिग्रेशन इंडेक्स ओके नाउ व्हाट डज इट मींस पीरेज कॉन्फिग्रेशन इंडेक्स बेसिकली रिप्रेजेंट्स द टाइम डोमेन प्रेजेंस ऑफ रेज रिसोर्सेस यू कैन सी pirach configuration index so it starts from 0 goes all the way up to 255 and these indexes represents which preamble format 0 or format 1 is going to be available from which subframe which system frame and what will be their starting symbols how many number of pirach slot will be there in a subframe and number of time domain pirach occasions in a pirach slot will be there and what will be the duration of the pirach so basically what all you need to know about the time domain presence of the rach resources you will get it from pirach configuration index all right then we need to understand next is cyclic shift in order to understand cyclic shift we need to also understand root sequence index so root sequence index or the rsi and cyclic shift are very much correlated with each other let me show you how if you remember there were two types of preamble formats long formats and short formats long formats are the ones where the root sequence indexes are 839 short formats are those where the root sequence indexes are 139 839 and 139 yes so long formats and short formats so they are all belongs to the root sequence indexes now so let us take the example of long formats so total 839 rsis are possible now what is a root sequence index one root sequence index can create more than one one or more than one more than one unique preambles for a cell unique preambles for a cell okay now when i say more than one that means it depends upon what is going to be its cyclic shift okay this is going a little confusing here so let me explain you one more time there are total 839 root sequence indexes and i am telling one root sequence index can create four or it can create 6 or it can create 9 unique preambles depending upon what is the cyclic shift now it is making clear let me show you first so here is the example of a cyclic shift so these are different cyclic shifts available starting from 0 to all the way up to 15 so n c s starting from 0 going all the way up to 15 let's say i'm using an example as 12 so 12 means the value is total 119 cyclic shifts are available for ncs value 12 so total 119 cyclic shifts are there so my root sequence index is 839 divided by 119 so what's the value that we will get so that means one rsi can create 
seven point something. Let's say seven unique preambles it can create. Seven unique preambles it will create. But if you remember few minutes ago, I told you that every cell re requires 64 unique preambles. How many require unique preambles? 64. Now one root sequence is generating seven unique preambles. And in order to generate 64 unique preambles, how many root sequence indexes that I need? 64 divided by seven, which is nine point something. That means 10 RSIs are required to plan this particular cell. Right, if my NCS value I'm considering is 12, so I need how many RSI is 10. So if I'm starting from the index 0, I'll plan 0 to 10 for this cell, 11 to 20 for this cell, 21 to 30 for this cell, and I will keep repeating the planning. Once I run out of all 839 root sequence indexes and after that I am going to recreate them. Now you understand, right? Very good. So this is how a root sequence index planning happens. So in, in a way, this is something similar to what you used to plan for normal basic planning or PCI planning or you know, in terms of a tool, it is going to reuse after some certain amount of time. Same is the case with short preambles. Same is the case with long preambles. So I hope you understand now. So we understood what is PRATCH and what is random access. We understood what all are the different PRATCH parameters. What is that? Preamble format. PRATCH configuration index. And then we understood about the cyclic shift and finally the root sequence index. And this is what we basically plan. So out of 839, how many root sequence indexes are required per cell? And that is how we repeat the pattern in a way that root sequence indexes are creating no collision between different cells. Let's look at the examples. So. In a 5G system, the initial connection is achieved by the process called random access. We already know this. Random access preambles which are available to every cell. How many random access preambles are available to every cell? 64 preambles. We know this already. Therefore, it is very important that every cell must plan the RSIs in such a way that they don't create collision or they don't create false preambles in the neighboring G naught Bs. Hmm. Understand? So the process wise, the 5G PRATCH planning is something similar to how we used to do it in LT. But the only difference that is there between the LT RATCH planning and the 5G RATCH planning is with the help of the beam forming, right? Because here, every cell transmit through different beams, right? So this is all the coverage from the same cell and whichever cell is best selected, the UE is going to send the random access on that particular cell itself. The, 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 the meaning of how one PRATCH is different from the another beam PRATCH Request is basically dependent upon a term called RA, RNTI. This I will tell you in detail in some other course. But here you can only see that the, the random access procedure basically happens by creating the root sequence index planning, right? 
Now, there are two types of root sequence indexes. The one which is called as the smaller root sequence indexes, which is 139, and the one which is longer, that, that is 839. Hmm. How a PRH planning is done? So you can say the first assign RSI, let's say, is 76. And how many number of root sequence indexes are required? You require 64 root sequence indexes. So here in this example, every root sequence indexes starting from 76 going all the way up to 139 is assigned for one single cell itself, right? And for another cell, it would be anything else. For some other cell, it would be some other things, right? So the uh, PRH management or automatic PRH planning or automatic RSI planning could be done either by the SON feature, which is known as SON PRH management. Some, uh, you know, vendors have already started supporting it, like uh, Nokia's Ethernet SON is already supporting the PRH planning and Huawei also have started supporting for the PRH planning itself. And there are other planning tools like at all asset which are already supporting to do RSI planning on using 5G. This is an example from one of the planning tool itself. So how the RSI assignment is done for every cell? It is dependent from on two different things. One is what is the first assigned RSI? And second one is how many number of assigned RSIs are required? So that is what we have in this chapter. I hope you enjoyed the training program. And since you got registered initially with us, so all the initial few people, we are going to have a one-on-one -on -one class also. If you have any doubts, any questions, you may send me as a private question and we will handle them all. We will reply you back one-on-one -on -one or we can create a single uh, you know, session wherein all the people can also join in. Thank you so much. I hope you had fun attending this training program. I'm glad that you like it. Thank you so much.